Hey, everybody. I'm really excited today uh, to bring you back to my friend, Horst Schulze. Horst, welcome to the, well, uh, this is on video. Uh, this is going out on our podcast. We're going to be posting this to our entire community. So thank you for taking the time to join us. Delighted to be with you. So, hey, a little background on Horst, if you guys uh, don't know his background. 65 years ago in a little German town, Horst, you started working as a server, uh, actually as an assistant server, if I remember, in a hotel. That's and you correct, just, yeah. Right? You just had this passion for hotels, and you started working for Hilton, and then Hyatt, and everybody out there might have heard of uh, a little hotel company called the Ritz-Carlton. And uh, Horst was one of the founding members members that created that organization, created your operating and your service standards. And it was just based on who you are, your core values, your faith. There's so much that went into that. And you wrote uh, an amazing book. And this is where how you and I got introduced called Excellence Wins. I read the book. It was absolutely phenomenal. Um, and it's about how do you really become your best in this world that we live in that's full of compromise. And that's why I first thought of you about what's happening today. And, and uh, everybody out there who's familiar with our, our podcast, uh, the Eternal Leadership Podcast, we had Horse on twice last year. And if you guys want to go listen to it, it was our most listened to, both two were our most listened to episodes, Horse, by the way, of the entire year. And it's episode 283 and 288. So if you guys want to go listen to some of our previous conversations with Horst, which are phenomenal, just go to eternalleadership.com forward slash 283 and 288 and all the links for everything for Horst is there. So that's enough. How about that? So Horst, here's what I'd like to ask you. And before we started recording, I said, you know, whether you're leading a large organization, a fortune 50 organization, or you're trying to figure out what to do now because you've either been laid off and now you're trying to figure out how to lead your family. I mean, this is really unprecedented across the spectrum. Um, you know, as people are coming to you and asking you your advice, I, I told Horace, let's just picture all of us sitting around in just a beautiful living room and there's a fire going and we're just having a fireside chat to, to learn from, from your yeah. wisdom. But what would you share with people that are trying to, make sense of everything going on right now well i would i would and of course what would i share i would share what what i i put myself in that situation what would i feel about what did i feel in similar situation now it never has been that extreme let's let's face it but we 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 all as leaders constantly are in the in the business of making decisions because of of problems that we encounter I mean, we have huge problems. We have 19, uh, 2007, 2008, 2009. Let me tell you, in the hotel business, that was major. Or, or earlier, we had in, in, uh, in Asia, by the way, we had really SARS at the time, right. and the swine flu. And, and at the same time, the, the, the fires in Borneo, which, which put smoke all over the area, we were running 10% occupancy. But well, now we run 0% occupancy, it also tells. However, we face the same thing. What did we do? If you're a leader, leader means you have a destination in mind. Mm. And you have to say to yourself, what, what destination do I have to establish right now for all concerned? What is essential that I do right now for the investors? What is essential at the same time? It has to be the right thing for my customer, my future customer, for the market. It still has to be the right thing for all employees. It still has to be the right thing for society. And once you make a decision, what you're going to do, you have the question yourself, would God approve? So I would say, what can we do now to protect the money? Now, clearly, the survival of the enterprise is number one. Mm. Because without the enterprise, you're not serving anybody anymore. So the survival of the enterprise is number one. It's no use to feel, to feel suddenly bad for somebody. Of course you feel bad. But you have to make decisions that, makes, that, that, makes, that assures that the survival of the, of the enterprise so that all employees can come back one day, so that the customer can come back, so that you can serve society, etc. 
So you have to agonize what savings can I do? What, what, where can I save? Where can I protect the buildings? Where can I protect, make sure that my customers in the future are still my customers? Mm. That has to be a question. How do, with other words, how do I communicate with them? How do I make sure that, I, that they still know that I still care? How do, we, do I still secure my customers for the future? That's still the number one primary thing. In, in, in a great organization, the number one thing you do is keep the customers that you have. That should be, if you're a really great organization, you understand the most important thing is having, keeping the customers you have, and you have all kinds of processes to make sure this actually happens, that you keep them. Yeah, and so that's a great question, right? Because a lot of our customers right now, right, yeah. their worlds have just been turned upside down. Maybe their cash flow has stopped temporarily. You better believe it. So what, what does it look like? Because what I really think, like, as I'm looking at, you know, from what we do, really coaching and working with leaders, working with teams, uh, what our focus has been, uh, we sat down, uh, Horst, and said, okay, what can we do to just be of service right now to add value and I didn't want to go to my, my customers and say, how can I help you? Because they don't know how to answer. They don't. So we actually put the time together and said, okay, let's think about their situation. What is one or two or three things we could go to them with and just say, hey, here's what we could do for you, for your team or for you individually. We're not asking for compensation because these are we're focusing on our existing clients and past clients because our entire thing is, you know what, when we, if we can add value – and build trust and build that relationship when we all come out of this and we are going to come out of this we're going to uh somebody said to me the other day and i love this quote right we're all going to come out of this and when we look back because of how we led things are going to have improved right our processes yeah. our relationships our people our team or it will get worse uh it's yeah. not going to be status quo um so with that said, what I would love your thoughts because you've been through these cycles and you have, I can't even imagine uh, running an organization then all of a sudden you go to 10 or 0% occupancy. I mean, talk about a, a body blow. And in, yeah. in when you're trying to manage basically, a, 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 I mean, you're dead in the water and what you're talking about is, hey, we still need to be focused on our customers. I think that is incredible. Uh, no, no, How do you I, do no, that? No, 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 let, no, I didn't say that. Yes, I said it indirectly. Focused on making sure that the customer still wants to deal with us after their. How do I make sure mm. they, they still are loyal to me after they're still? How do I make sure they're still my customers when we come out of that? That's what I said. And, and, and that's the key. How do I make sure they're still my loyal customers when we come out of that? And, right. and, and I, can, I can't give you two examples. That's true. I and I love what you said, though. First, though, the survival of the enterprise is number one. It's number or you, one. Or you can't keep your employees or serve the customers. So, yeah, good clarification. Thank you. So, yeah, and what, and you were about to talk about customers. So, go ahead. Well, let me give you two examples. Yeah. I'm, I'm, on, the, I'm on the board of a, of a, a REIT, a, a mm -hmm. uh, office, a, a, a real estate REIT, that office buildings. We, contacted all our, and have all kind, done all kind of other things but we also told them immediately you pay 20 percent less less rent right now period now at the same time i'm renting an office here and not one not one i'm so that's one one company now i am renting an office unrelated to that read but they haven't reduced any rent they haven't done anything to even communicate with us Mm. So I am an annoyed, annoyed I'm a tenant right now. I'm certainly not, not a happy tenant. In fact, when we are through this, I'm going to look if I get something, I get a better deal somewhere. Our customers in, in, on the read where, where I'm on the board, they're all happy customers. We communicate constantly with them. We ask them, how can we help? We, I hadn't had any communication from the management company here. So those are total, 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 total different approaches. One company couldn't care less what happens after this is finished, in a way. 
as long as they have the income right now. The other, uh, uh, the other company says, I want, now is a time to make sure that my tenants are loyal to us. So very important, very important difference, a huge important difference. And that it has to be, I have to sit down first now as the leader and say, all right, how to protect, how to make sure I come back out better than I was before I started. So what is better? Better is if I have more loyal customers. Yeah. Number one, if, if a company doesn't think that the most important thing is loyal customers, then that company doesn't think right, period. Mm. So, so that, that, change, that, that, that thinking shouldn't change now. And then, of course, next is how can I keep my, my employees? Because I need them again to serve my customer. How can I keep them? How can I keep the customer? First, save the, the, the company by keeping the customer and making sure that you're not wasting one penny that protect the buildings and protect the enterprise, protect the customer, protect everything. And still be sure, on the same time though, be sure that you keep, don't change who you are. Because mm. look, uh, let, me, let me give you an example. Uh, I remember when I worked as a young man, I worked on a, on a ship on the Holland America line going Europe to, to, to New York, back and forth. At the time, there was no plane service. There was ship service. You know, uh, Horst, my dad, who was 92, he just passed away, when he would go back to visit his family in Norway, used to take Holland America over to Europe to get to Norway. And he, uh, even, you know, recently, in some of our last conversations, talked about his time on those those ships, those transatlantic ships. So that, that's yeah, really that's fun right. memory. I'm, that's cool that you wrote And that that's up. right. That's, well, that's what, we, that's what we did. And we came out of Rotterdam, went to Southampton, and from there to Cobb Island. Yeah. From, from there on, we had a four-day trip, three-plus-day three trip to New York. Now, the destination was New York. Remember that. The destination was New York. One day out of Cobb Island, we run into a storm unlike anything we, anybody had, uh, even the captain said, never experienced anything in his, in his 40 years as a captain. Never experienced anything like it. So we, we uh, limped in to New York 28 hours late. Mm. Now, we run into a problem, but we didn't change our destination. That's the same thing. What was your destination before you started? What were the values of your company before this all started? What you, was your vision before this all started? Mm. That should not change. A vision doesn't change. Values don't change. Strategies, tactics, people change. If you create organization, the vision doesn't change, even though you're in this particular situation. In fact, it is during our darkest moments that we we need to focus on the light. And mm -hmm. the light, number one, is Jesus. And number two, you have to see men have to see what are the other lights and focus on them. But don't change your destination. Yeah. And that is, by the way, that's Aristotle said that. I, yeah. quote, I have a tendency of quoting philosophers, and I don't give them credit always. Okay, <laughs> Aristotle said that. It is during the darkest moments that we must focus to see the light. And mm. as Christians, first, the first light is Jesus. Yeah. And then uh, we have to see the light on the end of this. Well, yeah, and there is, you know, the other side of this. Like, you know, if I'm looking, you know, we've been doing things with our family to really talk about gratitude. Uh, all three of my boys, my daughter-in-law, my grandson, my wife, we're all here. And it's been an amazing time for us to reconnect to play games, to cook meals together. So even though there's uncertainty out there, I got to tell you, uh, I have really been enjoying that part of my life right now, which is the time with my family and reconnecting. And I really think we're creating a foundation right now that we're going to look back on this moment as a family and say, that's when, you know what, the Ramstead family, just everything changed for the better, right? I thought yes, we I were in a good place before, but now I think we're extraordinary. Sean, would you, uh, I, had, I spoke with a friend yesterday and I said, 
I am actually nearly embarrassed. I never felt that good. We're having such a good time. I never spent closer, wonderful, deep time with my wife, the family. And it is a wonderful time for us. Yeah. And do you mind? Uh, I don't want to know if you want me to do that on the podcast. Can I read something to you for a moment? Oh, yes, please. I'd, okay. I'd love it. Absolutely. Uh, that was written in 1855. In 1855, that was written. And it's, it says, and the people stayed home and read books and listened and rested and exercised and made art and played games and learned new ways of being. And they were still and listened more deeply. Some meditated, some prayed, some danced, some met their shadows. Mm. And the people began to think differently and people healed. And in the absence of people living in ignorant, dangerous, mindless, and heartless ways, the earth began to heal. And when the danger passed and the people joined together again, they grieved their losses mm. and made new choices and dreamt new images and created new ways to live and heal the earth fully. And they had been healed. That is beautiful. 18, 1855. I don't know what happened at that time that the people were staying home and so on, but isn't it beautiful? Yes, we too. And we, we dream new ways. We see new lights. And, and, and again, we have to see the light. We have to see the light. And again, I have to say it, the first light I see is Jesus. Mm -hmm. Then I know, once I see that, I know all the hope that's out there. And then I have to look at the lights that I see after this, concentrate on it, work for it, prepare for it. I'm a leader. I have a destination. I don't, we didn't, the captain didn't change New York as a destination. It still was the destination. And our destination for excellence to all concerned, all concerned our companies doesn't go away because we have a setback. Right. That should be, the, in fact, it should say, what can I, how can I take advantage of that? How, how do I win? How do I, how, what is the light on the end? And how do I prepare for that light for all concerned? That's our role as leaders. So let me ask you this, put yourself, cause you've been there, right? You're, you're a leader yeah. or you're part of a team yeah. and you're sitting in that room right now. It might be all on zoom, but you're on, right? You see everybody on the screen cause you can't get together in person. And we actually need to, as a group, you need to lead your group to reconnect to that vision, that destination, to reiterate your values, and then really um, harness the best thinking of everybody out here to make decisions about the organization, your employees, your customers. So people are having those conversations like right now, and they're having them daily. If you were sitting in one of those rooms with a group that were having that conversation, because you've been there, um, what advice would you have for the people that were having that conversation today? Well, well, don't be man. My first advice is don't be managed by the environment. Mm -hmm. Manage the situation within the environment. Excellence doesn't end. You still have to create excellence in what you're doing. Excellent, so, well, well, when you say don't be managed by the environment, <coughs> manage the environment. What, no, kind, manage, of, what kind of no, managing no, would that no. be? manage within the environment. Okay. Accept what is there. Okay. And then manage the situation that you can manage right now. Okay, got it. L like, like, uh, like uh, there still has to be an analysis. How, mm. for like I touched on earlier, what can I do to make sure that my customers are still my customers afterwards? What can we do about this right now? And identify the areas where you can relate to them, to, to your customers, let them know that you care, let them know that you're a worthwhile partner for them in the future. The same thing is true, of course, for all other that you're connected to, with the employees. What can we do today to a, help the employees as much as we can without compromising the enterprise? That is wrong, that's a wrong heart. Yeah. That is having the wrong heart and making a decision because you cannot end, 
uh, cannot compromise the enterprise. So, but what can I do for the employees? How can I, can I stay connected? How can I help them? You have to sit down and identify clear, not just, oh no, I had to do that. No, no, no. Agonize what can be done. Point, make it point, but and then prioritize it and work on those things right now. Prioritize it. And the same thing, as I say, for the enterprise, for the employee, and for society, you have to, have to do that. For the enterprise means the customers and so on. Yeah. So, so you're working heavily on those areas, on how to protect the assets. Of course, you have to, the, those are all the questions that you have to answer and apply processes and systems while establishing very clearly that this is a moment i'm not changing the enterprise i change my tactics and 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 strategies and systems for the moment but my long term objective do not go away i still want to be a leader in my industry i still want to be a leader so and and I still, I will not give up my overall values as a company. Mm -hmm. This, be, otherwise you come out of there and you're totally different culture. What, a culture that you don't even know. You can't have that. The culture should still be what it was. In fact, it should be improved, but not changed. So uh, let me share a, a story. I was just talking to a friend of mine who's a coach and he was working with a team uh, of a larger organization and one of their values, they were talking about their values, right? They were looking at laying people off and the team is like, well, I don't know how we can get through this without laying people off. And one of the, the members of the team said, well, it's one of our core values, right? That we value our employees and their families. And how were we honoring that value? So guys, let's get creative. And what they came up with Horst was the, uh, the, the CFO was there and they pulled out all the numbers and said, Hey, if everybody, at the management level and above took an 18% pay cut, we could keep every single employee here and get through the next six months without laying anybody off. Would everybody be open to doing that? And they kind of put that out there and everybody immediately volunteered, said, absolutely, I'd be, of course. I would be happy to take a pay cut so we can keep everybody in our organization. And if we, things get worse and we need to cut further, sign me up for that. And I just, and you know what, when you also operate as an enterprise and honor your values, your customers see that. I won't say the name of the organization, but there was a large organization that specifically got money from this financial aid bill that was just passed by Congress. And they got millions of dollars as an organization. And then they laid off a hundred of their employees after they were specifically named in this bill. I'll guarantee you their community and their customers are going to think very differently about these two right these two different organizations so that's a that's quite a contrast well obviously if you don't have if you don't have an honorable and, and value culture you won't have it because there's a, there's a, there is a, a corona out there mm -hmm. you, you you are who you are and but you have to make sure that you're not the the, the number the first one that you mentioned that should be a no-brainer that you take a, a, a pay card Right. I would I, 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 in, in 2007, 2008, I said I won't take any, any salary for a while and I, and to, in order to keep my, my, and my employees. That should be a no-brainer. But if you're a company of, of, of honor and integrity, you come up with those answers. You, and and you, you still, my, my whole uh, argument always, with, in all that you do, you do excellence. And right. I mean, uh, excellence and it's never an accident. It's always the result of high intention of great intentions okay intention sincere effort and intelligent execution that's what you have tonight proper proper uh, high intention don't understand but an intelligent execution but as i said it would not be an intelligent execution if it just keep on blindly paying everybody but you lose the enterprise that of course would be wrong that's not intelligence that is being, being a nice guy for the wrong reason by, by destroying everybody, everybody that you try to serve for their, their future, trying to destroy their future. Doesn't work. You have to sit down though and not just keep on operating by feeling. Right. You have to agonize right now and say, what is it really that is going on now? What is really what's going on? What do I have to do? Again, the question, 
to protect the enterprise, to protect my, empl my customers for the future, to protect my employees for the future. What do I have to do? What can I do right now? And see the light, see the lights in the future. You know, uh, 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 to, uh, to, to live is to suffer, but if you, to, to survive is to find meaning in the suffering and learn mm. from that suffering. <clears throat> wow, that's, that's a beautiful saying. Um, yeah. I think we're going to be quoting Horst Schultz pretty soon. You're going to be one of those philosophers that other yeah, yeah, people yeah, yeah, quote. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but so here's the framework, and I love this, right? It's, it's with a focus on excellence, right? Looking at mm. our investors, mm. our enterprise, our customers, our future com customers, our employees, and society. So that's the lens in which we look through things. We, re, we, as leaders, we talk about our destination, letting people know that that has not changed. We, right. make, we make decisions according to our values so that we are truly honoring our values. Like, hey, do we take a pay cut? What do we do? How do we do this? So we, we know that we're making decisions with excellence. And then we ask ourselves, hey, would God approve of this? That's and, right. And if we go through that as a framework, even though we might make mistakes, my sense, well, I know, because this is, uh, I've seen you do it. Um, I think this is definitely, now that you're saying this, this is how we've done, some th done it, right? You're going to look back on it and said, you know what? We got through that and we did it well, right? And, yeah. and that, this is yeah. a time for us as leaders, I really believe, um, to step up. And especially uh, people that, you know, as Christians out there, this is a time for us to really step into the gap and be a, a place of calm, uh, of light uh, in the world that it needs right now. It, ne it needs somebody to just, you know, slow down. Because I think a lot of people, I'm getting the sense, Horst. Let me ask you this. Because uh, we hear from so many people. And I think the emotions and the moods have shifted over the course of this getting longer and yeah. more uncertain and things being extended. Um, is it's gone from one of almost anxiety and fear a little bit, or you know, yeah. kind of a reactive mode, to one now of almost fatigue, in some places almost despair, especially as people maybe look at the future of maybe their industry or their company. Yeah. Um, if, if somebody was kind of you know you know had those feelings right now and they're real because life just got really really got hard. Um, oh, sure. What would you? How would you maybe share with somebody who? was sitting here at the fire pit with us who was kind of in that place. Well, I, I, I would again quote this. I would again say, in the morning of despair, focus on the light. Mm -hmm. And I, I would say that again. I mean, and I would, I would make it very clear if I'm the leader of the company for my employees, for instance, I, I, would, I would email each one of them, communicate with each one of them, and I understand and make very, very clear that I understand this is a serious problem. We have a very, very, very serious problem, but it doesn't change who we are. It doesn't change that we have a dream together to become the finest service organization in the world. Right. We're still all part of that. It doesn't change that we believe to care for, our, for each other and for our guests. We, we are still that, that we believe to work with integrity and with honor that we believe that every employee is, is, an, is not just working for the organization, but is part of this organization, part of a dream, that we still believe. But that hasn't gone away, I want you to know. And that doesn't change the fact that right now it's dire problem, a dire problem. But I want you to, want you to know my heart is with you and so on. We have to communicate that. But, but at the same time, communicate, there's still a dream out there. There's right. still a thought out there. We, we, are, we are still walking, even though there's a storm, we are still sailing to New York. That hasn't changed. And, then, and, and one day we will be in New York. We may be later there. And we may be suffering right now and all be sitting in front of our, our toilets <laughs> because we are all seasick. <laughs> yeah. But we will get to New York. We will get to New York together. So it, it, you, cannot, you cannot just give up and compromise your culture for, because you're being, you're being managed right now by the circumstances. You still have to 
manage as much of the circumstances as you can. Yeah, I, well, I think that's such a wonderful reminder that right now people don't need instruction or direction yeah. as much as you know what they need. Yeah. It's time for us to really be as leaders or actually I think just people in society and family members, just more human. It's time to listen. It's time to understand. It's time to point people back toward the light. Let them know that we're yeah. there. We care about them. We're in this together. Uh, and what I have found too is when I'm struggling sometimes and I just pick up the phone and call somebody and say, you know, how can I help you? And I start focusing on serving others. All of a sudden my entire mindset and inner world just transforms, you know, that quick. And so it's just a great reminder that, you know what, we're all in this together as people and yeah. we reach out, we affirm, we be humble, I think, and be authentic. Say, Hey, listen, I don't have the answers. I'm a little bit afraid here too, but guess what? we're still heading toward that destination, right, Horst? And we're that is, together and we're going to figure it, we're going to do our best to figure it out. Yeah, we, well, of course, we have to make wise choices right now. There are many mm -hmm. choices still. We have to make wise choices. And you do that, you, you don't do, make wise choices in a vacuum. You have to still involve mm -hmm. your people in yeah. the choices, decisions that they make. And, and mind you, it's, it's not luck that determines your destiny. It's the choices that you make right now. And, and they're only, they're only they're, your choices determine your destiny. Yeah. And, 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 this, and the, the best choices are made if you involve, not only as you agonize what is right for all concerned, you have to involve all concerned in your choices. That means you have to involve investors in your thinking. You have to involve your employees in your thinking. And in fact, if you can involve your customers and your partners in your mm. thinking. Right. So, so that you can make wise choices. It, it, whatever choice you make right now, it determines much of a, a new destiny that you have. Right. And, but, but again, if the focus is still the destination, then most likely the cho choices will be the right ones. Mm. That's so well said. Thank you for that. Yeah. Everybody out there listening, Horace, how do they connect with you and learn more about what you're doing? Where do they get your books? Or if they want, you know, uh, yeah. you know what's the work that you're doing right now? Well, right now, I'm, I'm, my work is being at home. <laughs> and it is about, I, I never, mind you, I never, ever had that much time with my wife and son at home. And it, it, it is just wonderful. I'm absolutely yeah. like that. Well, and of course, you can, my book, uh, Excellence Wins, yeah, which much book. of the, much of my philosophy ex, that I express today is, is, is explained and detailed and processed, if you will, in that book. And uh, you can get it obviously on Amazon, uh, uh, Excellence Wins. And otherwise, uh, I'm on, on the internet, uh, uh, hostschulze.com. I mean, you, you, you find that. And so you can get easily in touch with me in, in any way. And, but it's, 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 a, it's a good time of reflection. Like this mm. thing that I read that was written, it's about right. thinking, it's reflecting. It's, it's, search is, it's a time to search yourself. In fact, look back right now. It's never, uh, learning is never better than looking back at what you did right and wrong. So, there's a stop right now. Look back. What could you have done better than do it from now on? Mm. Do it from now on. You know, the, the philosophy, my philosophy that I always express, and it, it's difficult. I always go to work to create excellence, not to work, and to be with my friends. Now, physically that can be done right now. But emotionally, that should still be true to create excellence and work with and for your friends. Yeah, and we and can be with our friends, although it's, it is different. Like they are. You, it's you different. And, you and I are talking, right? Yeah. And, and I can pick up the phone and I can text people. I got to tell you, I, 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 for, I, you know, here's something I've learned. I let my busyness get in the way of having excellence in my relationships with my friends. 
That's and right. I've used this time to go out and reconnect people. Like I called somebody the other day and I realized as we talked, it had been six months since we talked and he's one of my close friends because we'd both been busy. And I realized this is some one thing coming out of this that I am committed to making a, a permanent change on just how I'm communicating with, with people that are important to me. Yes. Oh, I, I, I feel the same way, very, very clearly. Yeah. So there is a lot of value in this. And, uh, you know, uh, I, I don't want to be too emotional about this, this situation, but I, when I, and too personal, but still, when I, I had, as you know, I had cancer 26 years ago, mm -hmm. which at the time I was told by all the experts that I would have one year to live. And this was a overwhelmingly difficult time. And I had a feeling at that time that God was knocking on my door. Mm. He had knocked on my door many times. And I had said many times, okay, I listen. And uh, 10 minutes later, I was pulled back into the world. This time he knocked very loud on my door when I had cancer, very loud. Yeah. And, this, and that time I listened. And just maybe, just maybe he's knocking on our doors to take him serious, to listen to him and pay attention and do our stuff that we do with him in mind. Because allow me to say that when I turned 80 a year ago, I woke up and said, oh, how lucky I am. Not everybody's going to make the 80. And I had cancer and was told I would die 25 years before that by every expert. Yeah. And here I made it. Here I made it. And, and then I look back at my life. And I hope nobody thinks this is crazy, but, but hear me out. This is an emotion. Yeah. And then I look back and look at my life. And I had regrets. And mm. everything I regretted was only thing that I regretted and had to regret was the sins that I committed because I didn't listen to him. Mm. So maybe this is time for us to say, hmm, he's knocking on my door. And from here on, I live in a way where I won't have any regrets and, do every, and for our enterprise, do everything right and we'll have no regrets. So the decisions have to be for your enterprise, for your employees, for your life, have to be so you won't have any regrets afterwards. Mm. So again, it has to be choices, decisions, and, but they have to be intelligent decisions right now. And again, they're intelligent if you respect all concerned and involve them in their decision making. Yeah. Wow. That was really meaningful. That, that was we all needed to hear that. Thank you for sharing. Uh, my goodness. Uh, just who you are. And uh, I am so thankful that you came on today, that you shared this message. This is what people need, needed to hear. Um, Horst, I really appreciate you and who you are. Thank you. And, Thank uh, you. and uh, we would love to have you back because that, that, was, that was awesome. Well, and becoming a habit with us. <laughs> great. Would be great. Thank you. Nice to be with you. Really yes. an honor. Really an honor.